we are Detroiters, the black mecca of possibility. Art, it can be resistance. Art can be visionary. Art has a role in social justice. And if you're an artist, you have a responsibility to create the world you want to see. Also articulate the truth and what's happening. I grew up in Detroit, uh, born and raised. I write every day, at least five minutes in the morning. The impact that art has had on me inspires me to do it. You know, I had a, a kind of a, a tough childhood, and so I remember escaping to my journal. And so I want to create that opportunity, particularly for young people, but for everyone. Like, there is meditation and healing and writing and creating and getting your story out. I used to just write about anything, whether it be relationships, but a lot of my poems are like political now. It's like, I'm, I feel like I'm responding to the moment. Um, and so even though I have like some art that I still create that talks about relationships, that talks about silly things, most times I'm, I'm engaging in what's happening in the world. I'm performing at 9405. John R. is being launched as a bookstore this week, actually. And so I'm happy to do a open mic performance to kind of kick it off for them. I know I'm going to do a poem that I kind of do as an intro poem that is like my way of introducing myself to people. And it's called If I Never Had a Sin. And it's basically just talking about like, these are the things that I've been through, but had I not gone through those things, then I wouldn't be here. Took me a while before I woke up and stopped pitying me, but took responsibility for my actions. But the fact is, I'm still growing, still learning as I go, and day by day is a struggle, a constant juggle between my home life and work. And I'm gonna do a poem that talks about like loving Detroit, <laughs> because I do. <laughs> a lot like you have been discarded like debris, deemed useless to naysayers and convictors. Yet you keep rising, clinging to vitality. You refuse to allow statistics to dictate your destiny and the media will channel your journey. And then I'll talk about police brutality, particularly um, young black women who are missing from the narrative. They bury us in plain sight. Our brutalized bodies crash to the pavement like shattered dreams. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about love but you do have to be a model for my son. Be willing to make sacrifices for two, not just one, cause we come as a package and I'm not willing to unwrap this for just anybody. I try to speak from my perspective, um, use I statements mostly, but um, also mostly young black children and women uh, particularly. And I do in some of my poetry, I talk to young black men, I talk to people of color, um, and I also just talk about like marginalized and oppressed communities. She travels through life like a tourist, uncomfortable in her own home, inside her own skin, tormented by the demons within her own psyche. She's running from herself, working her fingers to the bone for wealth she'll never find pleasure in having. Stress in waking up are synonyms, and she hates kissing him, but marital obligation says that she must. One-sided lust is the sum of a union she's already mentally divorced from. A lot of times the poems come from an emotional place, and so I'm, I try to think about what made me create the poem in the first place. And a lot of times, unfortunately, if the poem is something that's challenging, those conditions still exist, and so it's easy to stay in tune with what the art was about. Um, so it hasn't really been difficult. Uh, I hope someday that those poems will be, you know, a thing of the past and I won't have to. It'll be something I say, you know, historically. Historically, I wrote this poem about, like, racism and sexism, but that's not a thing anymore. I'm hoping that we'll get there, and I think art plays a role in that. The consciousness is shifting, and, and folks want to hear art. They want to hear artists respond and articulate, number one, what's really happening, and number two, a vision for where we go forward. And so now it's like it's a movement moment, and it's a prime opportunity for my art to have a voice now where it didn't so much a decade ago. I would be writing poetry about social justice and those things, and folks didn't want to hear that. You know, this was post-racial America, and like, we didn't have those issues. I think about the role of art and poetry in like the black arts movement. And then I, re I feel that responsibility to nurture younger people to know that they don't have to wait until tomorrow. Young people have a voice now and they can contribute now. And it's not when you grow up or in the future, it's, it's now. I have some art that speaks particularly to young black girls and young black boys. And it's basically telling them that, you know, you're gonna be told that you're not something. 
And you know, I want to tell you that you are. You're much more than what you've heard about yourself. Black child, born to black child. They will drag you through the mud, but stay resilient. Carve your mark into the wind. Turn your nose up at the naysayers and leave the world better than you entered it. I think that art is a way to re-spirit people, particularly young people. Um, if they feel like they have a voice and their voice is valuable, then they start to behave in a particular manner. We all have a responsibility to create a more humane society. And whether you're an artist, whether you're an educator, whether you're a mom or a father or you're a student, no matter who you are, you have a role and a responsibility to create a better society, to leave places better than you entered them, or at least don't harm them. And so I would ask that whomever you are, take on that responsibility. You are Detroit, the road to progression, the mirror image of endurance and you hold the key to taking back our humanity. Thank you.